Dr. Allison, thank you very much for your scientific recommendation and comments for Japan. Uh, this time, uh, please uh, uh, send a message to Japanese people, uh, people in Fukushima. Thank you. Well, I'm not sure that my message is just for yes. the people of Fukushima, nor the people just of Japan, because I think what has happened in Fukushima could have happened uh, in many parts of the world. We have a uh, we have a lot of rethinking to do about our reactions to radiation, yeah. and it's unfortunate for the Japanese people that they have uh, had the experience, but I think that all of us uh, in the world should be uh, learning from it, and learning from it in a rather different way to uh, what one reads about in the press, because, I mean, there are two problems. One is the uh, keeping the energy production yeah. of the yeah. uh, reactor under control, and that is an engineering problem, mm -hmm. uh, and that is difficult, and a lot of money is spent on it. Yeah. Um, and it will continue to be difficult, but we know how to do it. Uh, the other thing is the effect of the radiation on people. And uh, although the reactors have destroyed themselves, uh, nobody has died at Fukushima, not of radiation, they've died of all sorts of other things, um, but nobody has died of radiation. Yes. Uh, yeah. And my best calculations are yeah. that in the next 50 years, nobody's going to die yeah. of radiation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think the world should be thinking about that uh, every day um, on the roads or in Chinese coal mines or wherever you look. Many, many more people die. Yeah. We do not appreciate nuclear mm. radiation and nuclear technology. It's safe. Because of the Cold War, we mm -hmm. uh, were frightened of it, but we shouldn't be.